Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now in today's video you're going to be seeing two different things, or better said, two different forsythias in different stages of pruning. Behind me, here in my own garden, I have a forsythia which over the course of three years has undergone a rejuvenation pruning, taking out one third of the older branches every year over a period of three years. And this year is going to have a maintenance pruning post rejuvenation. So I'll take you along on that journey with me right now. The next thing I want to show you is an actual fact over the fence once again in my neighbor's garden. And it's going to show you exactly what this beauty behind me looked like only three years ago. And many of you are probably going to be able to identify. It is an incorrectly pruned forsythia. It is so ugly. It's been kept short by an electric hedge trimmer. You know I'm absolutely allergic to electric hedge trimmers, except when necessary, when doing a hedge. Never for pruning. But anyway, let's leave that to one side because it gets my blood up. Okay, so you're going to see it. Its tabletop is about three foot high. It's got witch's brooms at the top, really, really dense at the top, leggy at the bottom. I have a photo of it about two weeks ago or three weeks ago when it was flowering. Very, very ugly. But I want to show you how it is possible to prune from that to this in three years. This forsythia, after the juvenation pruning, has now long, long whips, as this variety should, somewhere between 8 to 12 feet high. And during the flowering season, from head to toe, it was a mass of flowers. And that is what I'm looking for in this type of tree. Now you can either let it open out like that, be more open, or as I like it, more like the vessel shape in the middle. So this is a maintenance pruning. At the end of last year's video, it was very, very bare and very, very sparse on vertical stems here below. But I said, not to worry, new stems are going to form. And of course, yes, they did. So you can see there are lots and lots of branches and stems to choose from. Now pulling back again, I particularly want to get the vessel shape, so things like this to go out to one side and over to that side I'm going to be removing. I'm going to be removing one very, very old ugly stem at the back and I'll go round now the shrub in a minute. You'll see it's actually in fact protruding into the centre as well, so that's one more reason to get rid of it. But let's have a closer look now at what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is get the loppers out and remove the ones that are affecting the shape. I'm keeping the camera deliberately back so you can see the transformation when I remove these branches, how automatically I'm going to get that beautiful vessel shape that I'm looking for. Now you'll see immediately how the V shape or the vessel shape is emerging. This one coming out here That one also needs to be dealt with because it's crossing over the one behind. I'm just going to show you the point where it's crossing and then I'm going to cut it out. Now the next thing I want to have a look at is this one. This is one of the last of the older stems, the original stems belong to this. But if I follow it up, you'll see that here there's a branch that's actually growing quite nice. It's growing in the back, which is not very dense. But the older part of the stem goes right into the centre of this shrub. And of course, because it's going into the centre, it's crisscrossing everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to remove it right down to the base because I'm actually interested in having this branch that goes in the right direction forming a vessel shape on the back because it has to form a vessel shape all around and not just on the front. So I'm going to take that down to this joint here. If I get rid of that, then I get rid of all of this. Now, am I going to remove any of this growth from down below? These lovely new future stems, not this year. I'm going to leave them do the things. I'm going to leave them flower beautifully. And then of course, in every maintenance pruning, you're just going to be taking an odd one here and there every single year to keep it in check. This one, however, I am going to be taking out because this one is heading towards the fence, not in a good position. So that one is going. So follow that down. And wherever it links on, you can see right down here, that's where it links on, that's where it's got to be cut. Now I can see here, a crossing branch, if I follow it up, it crosses 
just about here. So I'm going to follow this one, which is actually quite spindly. I'm going to follow this one right down and see where it comes around. And I can see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Right, in here, so it's coming off right down at the base. Don't ever remember, please, cut fuchsia tops off because when you cut them off, you get a witch's broom, a thicket. You always take things back to base. That could be back to the ground or back, in this case, to the branch or the mother branch. Now, while we're at it, you can see some serious crossing going on here. So that is obviously got to go. Even though it seems obvious, always have a look to see which one is in your best interest to move. The new one that's crossing over or the older one that might be past its prime. Always have a look first. Look first, then act. You can't put it back afterwards. I've just followed it around the corner. This is where it pops up. And if I follow it out, you can see that it's one of these branches that is opening and opening. With this year's growth, with the weight of it, it's going to weigh down to the ground and certainly wreck the vessel shape. So it's definitely got to be removed. This is the one that's got to be removed. So let's take the weight off of it first. Just make a quick cut halfway. So I'm just going to remove halfway to remove the weight. Then another one, another cut a little bit further down. And then I need to get around the corner, probably with two hands for this. Yeah, I've just followed it down. So I'm going to do, I'm going to need my two hands so I'll be able to film it. But I'm just obviously going to make sure that I push it well away from the nearby branch so I don't damage it. When I push it, so I'm going to hold with one hand, cut with the other. So we'll be back in two seconds. Then I go in with what I call anticipating trouble. This one is not rubbing yet, but it certainly will be by the time the growing season goes on. So why wait until it causes problems? Get in there and nick it off in the bud. All you've got to do now is basically look for those branches that are crossing. They're usually quite spindly. At least if they've done a rejuvenation pruning, they should be quite spindly. And it's just a question of cutting them off. And as I said before, getting rid of any that might cause problems in this growing season. Don't wait until it happens. Get rid of it beforehand. Also ones like this that are clearly growing into the centre, we well, you get rid of that right now. Let's get rid of the one that crosses. We said it's this one. So follow it right down. Get in there, nice and close. And off we go. So I'll probably spend a little bit of time now snipping here and there, but basically it's done. And all through the growing season, all of these little stems down here are going to grow up and become beautiful whips through this growing season that are going to sway in the breeze. And next spring, next early spring, this is going to be a mass of colour. And the best thing is because it's on a rejuvenation pruning and a maintenance pruning, the flowers are going to be right from down there, right to up there. What a glorious sight. It's now time to hop over the fence to see the other one that's not quite so beautiful. So here I am in my neighbour's house and this is the forsythia in question. As you can see, it's like as if there were two different levels. The bottom is a mass, a chaos of branches and stems, but very few leaves. And I'll show you in the video, there are very few flowers either. And up at the top, it looks like a woolly mammoth. And this is from years and years of controlling it height-wise. And if I get in close, you can see it. If I get up close, you can see all of these cuts all over the plant. And the flowers, as you can see, had no chance at all to show off their potential and show off their beauty. They were just massed together on a thicket that you couldn't see one flower from the next. And if I come down here, you can just see it's a mass of branches, branches that are crossing, branches that are rubbing. You've got some horizontal ones, but it's not really causing that much damage because it's got these sort of like little granite pebbles. It isn't actually making contact and forming more and more out here, which is something in its favour. So I think first of all we're going to do is remove all the ones that are crossing, some of the ones that are puny, and once we finish that, we'll see what we've got left. Now in a shrub you can do either of two things. You can either come in, six inch mark, and go frack, preferably with a lopper and not with an electric hedge trimmer because that leaves ragged edges and you want nice clean cuts. So you could come in and do rejuvenation pruning at six inches and leave it grow back. If you do that method, what you do need to do is cut it off and then get in even further with your secateurs and pull out a lot of those branches so when, it so when it does start to grow back, it's not as congested. So method number one for rejuvenation would just be cut it all off and clean as best you can 
some of the branches in the thicket in the middle so it grows back with more air and light getting through. The second method is the one I used because my one is exactly the same as this four years ago or three years ago and that is to remove a third of the branches. Now what third do you remove? Well this has got so many crossing branches and rubbing branches and interior branches and puny branches where you can take your pick. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the rubbing ones first and a few of the puny ones. Always making sure that I'm getting this sort of like vessel shape which you know I do like and we'll see where we go. So bit by bit. I'm actually going to remove the soft growth from down here because I really need to see what I'm doing and at the moment it's crossing in my path. Look at this one. How it's crossing in front of that one, behind that one and you keep following it up and it keeps crossing. That one I'm going to take it right down to base which is where it joins in here. I'm not finding this easy with one hand actually. <laughs> even get this one it's you see there's so many branches that it doesn't even fall when it's cut goodness me while I'm on the way dead branches I'm going to remove this as well I'm going to remove this part of it first and pull it down you can hear look at that now I need to get the rest of it out I'm going to need to get that with the loppers because it is dead and dead things tend to be a lot more difficult to remove and while I'm at it, as I remove that dead one, as I remove that dead one, which is this one, I'm going to remove this one behind it because that's going straight into the centre and not doing anybody any good. So I'm going to get this out first, which is a greener one, and that'll leave that open to make it easier to cut. So let's see if I can get in here with my secateurs. Now here is one on the interior, you can see it comes up here and it opens into three different ones and it's choking up the, the inside so we're going to get rid of that one as well I'm going to start clearing out the inside of this. You can see all this debris that's here, it's almost like bird's nest, it isn't, it's just literally there's so many branches that as the tree loses or the shrub loses its leaves it's got nowhere to go and gets caught up there in the middle. So we're going to get rid of these inner ones, or some of the inner ones anyway, so certainly this one that opens into three we'll get rid of that. As close to the base as possible. You hear that? That's dead. Typical dead sounds. This also looks to be dead. Is it getting? I mean, the poor things are getting no light and no air. It's normal they're going to be dead. I could actually pull that out of my hand. I think they're all dead. We're getting rid of the dead ones. I want to get rid of the dead ones, and we'll sort sort about the living ones. This is another one that looks pretty dead. It's got one, two, three, four, five forks. It's also rubbing on one of the major li live ones. So we'll get rid of that one as well. But this is going to need a lopper. Just put the camera down for a second to get the lopper at that. Again, I've got two crossing ones here. This one is an older one. You see down here, it's already got little holes in it. So I'm going to be keeping the younger one, get rid of the older one, and that might like killing two birds at the same time. Removing a third of, a third of the older branches and helping the new ones not rub together. So let's get that one rid of that one as well. The other one I'm going to get rid of is this one here. This one here has got some interesting bottom growth growing outwards, long branches, thin branches. It gets a bit muddled up here, we can fix that later. But for the moment I'm taking this one out and we'll see where we go from there. Here are 
things are a lot more complex. Look at this mass of crossing stems and branches. Let's go bit by bit. This one, the top of it doesn't look very healthy and this branch heads right off towards the fence. So I'm going to get rid of that in its entirety, which will open up a bit down here so I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll get rid of that one first. And here I'm going to make some decisions about what goes and what stays. There's also a problem of how to get at it. See this one? This is a nice branch growing up nicely, but down here it is crossing. And I'm probably going to be taking out this big thick one here, so I need to let this one go. But don't worry, new ones are going to grow. They always do. It is a forsythia. And a forsythia, the one thing it knows how to do, it knows how to grow. Then up here, I see things happening like this one crossing up here. So I'm going to just make a general clear out here and see what we've got left before we start on the top half of the tree, or shrub better said. That's looking a lot better already. Now I'm going to go in there and take some dead branches out. Some of these puny branches out right down to the base. If I had uh, two hands at it, I'd be doing it a lot better, but you can use your imagination. Ones that are future crossers. Ah, dear me, what a, what a mess. Let me get in there for a minute. these two behind that are dead. I've got to rid of those as well if I can get my hand in around. Right. Now let me have a look at this here. This is obviously rubbing. But which one do I want to keep? And the other branch has gone, gone around the other side. So in actual fact, if you have a look at us, you see that this one is going into the centre and then opens out into this big, huge thicket. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'll probably get rid of this one. And then that'll be it on as regards the lower half. I just wonder if I can do this now with one hand with uh, secretaires. <laughs> get rid of the ones that are going towards the center. This is going up, that's perfect. The ones there at the side are going out, again, perfect. So I just need to get rid of this one for the moment that is causing the thicket in the middle. I think this is going to be needed a lot, but I'm going to try it with this, but we'll see. With one hand, no joke, with two hands would be easy, but... Felcos are Felcos. God, it's too hard to get out of... Ah, there we go. You see now all the debris is now free to fall on the ground. Look at all this mess. Now, we're looking a lot healthier down there below. I'm not going to remove any more. I'm going to leave that for the moment for this year. We'll see what we'll do with it next year. But for the moment, I'm going to leave it. On the way up to the top, I'm going to remove the crossers, like this one. This one is behaving very badly. Mm. Future crossers. Now, if I pull back, you can see it's something like what mine was like last year. Now new growth is going to spring up and that new growth is going to be controlled so it becomes full but not congested. Uh, there's still a thicket on the top. A lot of the thicket obviously is gone, a lot of the density is gone because it's, it's all there on the ground. But nevertheless what I'm going to do is just try and make it less dense. Try and take a few branches out to get rid of the witch's broom effect because it really is amazing. Where you make the cut, it just gets more branches and more branches and more branches and it's never ending. So I'm going to do is just like clarify, for instance I go in here, take off one of them, leave this part grow up, take off this side one. And if you get in next to the branch, that will not form a new branch. This one is sort of going off that way so we're rid of that one as well. Always flush against the branch, we do not want to form more branches up here. We've got plenty. So what I'm going to try and do actually is go pom-pom by pom-pom or witch's broom by witch's broom. Just taking out a few branches here and there just to try and get rid of this density. And next year 
it's not going to be beautiful, but it's going to be on its way because you're going to get part of the thicket, which is still there, but you're going to get new branches all through this growing season growing up and those ones will form whips and we'll be blooming on whips. And little by little, we'll be getting rid of this thicket until within three years, the entire shrub is going to be up there, like my one, eight to 10 feet tall, and it's going to be blooming from the bottom right up to the top. We've got to get there first. Well, that's that finished. As you can see, it looks like a completely different shrub. Next year, you're going to start getting flowers right from the base right up to the top. Now, I've clarified up here a lot of the thicket. Obviously, I can't do it all. There's still a load of branches that have been produced by uh, constant hacking it every year. But I've removed about maybe three out of every five, leaving it a lot cleaner here. And over the next few years, probably even next year, you're going to get a lot of shoots from the ground up and those are going to be beautiful whips growing above the level of the thickets and bit by bit these old thickets will be removed one by one until in three years time as i said before you're going to have an eight to ten foot shrub with lovely long golden whips now there are two things i want to remind you about the forsythia one is they have their moment in a spring garden early spring garden they have their moment of glory they are absolutely glorious spectacular if you prune them correctly, they're going to have flowers on those long whips from tip to toe. But what happens the other 11 months of the year? Let's face it, if you look at the leaf, the shape is pretty ordinary. The colour of the leaf, again, pretty ordinary, not very inspiring. So we need to do all in our power to make it look good the rest of the year. So what do we do? Leave it alone. If you leave it to its own devices, those beautiful spires, 8 to 12 feet tall, are going to tower above the Mahonia and other shrubs in your garden and have their own chance to shine throughout the year and not just for one month. So as I said, leave them alone, please. The other thing is variety. There are many, many different varieties of Forsythia, from the teensy winty wee little ones that are only three foot tall to the towering ones, eight to 12 foot tall. Choose the variety that goes with your garden and goes for the space within your garden, always taking into consideration overhead wires, overhead branches, something that can get in the way, and plant the one that fits the space. Because a forsythia that is pruned for height reduction looks ugly. Every time you cut it, it forms a pom-pom or witch's broom of branches. It forms like a thicket. It's got legs on the bottom and a thicket around the top. If you leave it alone and prune it correctly, it becomes those beautiful spires. So choose your variety correctly and don't reduce it in height. Of course you can reduce in height. You just get out a hedge trimmer and do it but it ain't gonna look very nice. So we want all our forsythias to be beautiful swans and not ugly ducklings. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next week here in Granny's Garden. Bye-bye now.